morning, everybody. Let's just get the uh, chat up so I can see what everyone is up to. Good morning, everybody. Right, let's close that down. Good morning for a very wet and windy barrow. Well, good morning. Um, wow, well, good morning from a very wet, drizzly, grey Dolverton. So I'm actually in Dolverton today. I'm actually, we've got a um, sort of a holiday home and so we've come away for the week so sorry if I'm looking really bright <laughs> but um we've got this lovely little cottage and um the downside is that the light is not fantastic so I've got good light source around me but it's kind of like uh <laughs> quite bright um so yeah okay cool so yeah um good morning from a very wet and windy Sudbury good morning Lucy good morning Jan uh, yeah, so that's why I've got the kind of different uh, setup. Yeah, good morning, Camille, looking dull here. Yeah, it's pretty much like, so we've gone away for the week. We came down on Saturday evening, and it's been rain since we've got here. And our garden is absolutely manically over, overgrown. Um, let me just straighten that a smidge. Oopsie. Oh, that way. Sorry, just played about with the camera a little bit because you know what it's like when you have to change your setup a little bit. Um, yeah, so we, good morning, Dulcie. Good morning, Charlotte. Good morning, Anita. Oh, from Johannesburg in South Africa. Wow, please tell me you've got some sun because <laughs> we have none here. Um, morning, Elaine. Uh, yeah, so I was just saying we've come down and we were like, well, we need to do the garden. We need to like, you know, mow the lawn and we need to sort of cut back one of the, We've got like a bush outside like the window and it's just gone crazy like a rose bush and we can't do any of that because it's pouring it down with rain but you know it is what it is so yeah good morning laura from a wet and windy faux far, faux far. i'm not sure where that is but yeah good morning good morning angela good morning joanne it's very cold here in johannesburg is it it's not so cold here actually it's just wet and it's a bit miserable, but it's still quite muggy and still quite humid. So it's not really, really like um, chilly. It's just really quite, yeah, it's just a strange one, really. Um, so I am on my laptop today. I'm not normally on my laptop, but I'm normally most up. Um, but today we're going, you know, old school. <laughs> um, I can't use the mouse <laughs> because all my USBs are currently being used for the cameras. But, you know, it's all good um it's when in wet swansea great weather for the brambles grow yeah it is if you can cut them when it's dry <laughs> the problem is it's great weather for everything to grow but we only so we can only come down so we try to come down sort of maybe once a month oh hang on. we've got a wasp in here um we try to come down maybe once a month um just for like a long weekend but the school holidays have kicked in now so you know we've come down sort of got a week in before we have to sort of get back to a bit of normal um and yeah it's just difficult oh nice on the east coast of scotland nice cloudy less than a day in the office for me oh, i mean uh it is a typical english summer i mean i do I've, i am that person that i've said this before i don't love the hot sun i don't cope well with the hot sun so i will be honest i, I prefer it to be cooler i like sort of autumn and spring you know where it's just got a bit of a breeze but it's still quite nice and oh my lord there's a great big wasp in here if i suddenly run it's because i've just i don't i'm terrified of wasps and there's a wasp right on my window which is here and they can see him but it's okay we'll ignore him hi carol okay amazing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and show you what we've got on the table for today um, I'm hoping that you'll like it. I think it's a lovely project. And hopefully I've got a good light set for you to be able to see. Hang on. My setup's a bit. Oh, okay. Right, so I'm going to switch this around. Um, and hopefully you can see that okay. Oh, I'll pop that onto quiet. Um my phone on quiet because i forgot to do that and see what we're doing so hopefully you can see this okay uh, morning from florida oh hi shirley amazing uh 
this looks like a pretty make today oh thank you lucy yeah i really enjoyed doing this one hi judith um okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and put all right bear with me one moment um bear with me two seconds uh i just want to check because i'm struggling a bit to see it properly on the laptop so i just want to see that it's it's coming across okay but obviously i'm relying on, on everybody to tell me if it's um if it's not clear or if it's um a bit dark but hopefully it's okay for you to be able to see um so what we've got is the project we've got for this today is this just here now i've got a few lights on me so hopefully you can see this well. so my screen's gone really small for some reason today um i don't know if it, i think um it's changed its settings a bit so it's not as clear for me to be able to see what we're doing so i'm just trying to kind of see it okay i think you can see it okay so it looks clear okay that's fine okay looks good lighting okay thank you sorry it's just for some reason my screen's really little and it's really difficult for me to make sure that you can see as you should <clears throat> but I'll, I'll, I'll have to rely on you guys to tell me if it isn't so we've got this beautiful hematite um arrowhead which are just stunning morning Anne. Um, and then we've got complementing beads and wire to go with it. This is all hematite and the whole piece has been rosary linked. And then we complete it with a little hook and clasp. And there is a PDF to accompany this project. And we do have it in lots of different colorways. So this is the, the front just here. And then this is the back just here so you know it's nice uh, i think I've, I've got a couple of um I've, i'll show you a few of the different colorways this is the one that i've completed all the way along and you'll see there as i said you've got the hook and clasp here to be able to make it complete um and i want to show you that i still had all of these beads left out of this project so that's the main sort of piece that i've made um so i want to go ahead and share the um tutorial with you so what i'm going to do is just screen share one moment oops not that button wrong button there we go so i'm just going to share the information and then i'll show you as we're going along so we want that one we don't want that one we want that one okay so so what you'll see is we've got here where are we arrow on rosemary chain so you'll see that we've got here the video tutorial which is being obviously recorded now for you to be able to go back and watch to your own leisure which is on the facebook and on the youtube channel so you see here we've got them for seven pound 20 per kit so you've got the arrow the blue one which is the one that we've got here then we've got the bronze uh that's this one here okay So I'm just trying to make sure you can see what I can see. So we've got the bronze, which is this one here. And that's that it helps if I turn it the right way, doesn't it? So you've got the bronze here. Then you've got the gold, which I believe is this one here. Okay. Then we've got the green. Which one was the green? Is it this one or is it this? Is it this one? Just going down to have a little look i think it might be this one this is like a sort of old gold green i think it's a bit more blue maybe it's no it's this one maybe it's this one <laughs> um i think it might be this one because it's with the gold and again this one's just got a plain um wrap and then we've got the i'm just going down again so then we've got this one here which i believe is the mermaid pink Ooh, this one oh no this is the mermaid pink which has got again the matching beads this one i actually made reversible and i will show you that properly um in a moment on the main screen but this one was made reversible and it's got two amazing colors it's got like a lovely greeny pinky color and then this one here We've got the mermaid pink. Sorry about the barking. 
Um, it just means my neighbors come through. Um, so we've got this one, which is the mermaid pink, which is, uh, sorry, this is the rainbow, rainbow one. And again, look at that colorway. And then finally, you have the uh, silver with the black wire. All of these are £7.20. And I'm just going to stop that sharing now. So all of these were £7.20. And <laughs> you get 10% off until the uh, end of the week, which I think is fantastic. So that £7.20 is including the, um, the 10% off. Thank you, Lucy, for popping that link up. That's really appreciated. Love the rainbow and the mermaid pink. Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, I've got to be honest, I absolutely loved all of these. I don't think I could literally, if you said which one do you want to choose. I went with the pink, the blue and gold. I love the mermaid pink. Um, I love the fact that, which one is it, this one here, where it's almost got like a goldy colour and then it's got like the pink. Um, you've got the rainbow. They're just all fantastic kits. And I think great for which, whatever occasion you would want them to be for. You know, you could have it for something a bit fun. Now, I've done a rosary link chain with these. You could, of course, do a, um, you could, of course, do a, uh, a leather cord if you wanted to. I mean, I think this, the black and the silver would be great for gents jewellery. You know, if you wanted to have this just on like a long style um, again, chain even. So, you know, there's a lot of versatility. And you can see that from this one that I've made up fully, um, I've made the whole piece up. And then, of course, you've also got beads left over. I just want to show you the beads that we've got left over. I mean, there's enough there for earrings, a bracelet. I mean, I think I've got a stretchy bracelet there. Yep. I mean, look, nice stretch. Look at that. Oh, that's nice. I'd, oh, do you know what? That feels so lovely and cold as well. Um, still got one left, you know. So lots and lots of potential with these kits. Really lovely. Genuine hematite with the wire. Perfect kits. So what we're going to do is you do have a um, you do have a PDF to go with this, and that PDF will also guide you through um, how to create the actual pendant itself. And then how to do a basic rosary linking and connecting it to another um, bead, you know, like the whole piece, as well as showing you how to do the hook and the clasp section. So it's a complete uh, start to finish. Good morning, Star. How are you? Um, so, yeah, loving the mermaid and the rainbow and the silver. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a complete start to finish. So I'm going to show you how we can wrap one of these. Um, and so, again, on this one, I just want to show you this one up close. You can see that I tweaked it a little bit for you to be able to actually um, have it reversible if you wanted to. Um, so there's a couple of different. Oh, no, Star, you broke your thumb. Dare we ask how? Um, I hope you're okay. And thumbs are the worst. Like, hands and fingers and thumbs are like, the worst because there's nothing you can do other than sort of strap it up is there oh well, i hope you're okay and wishing you a speedy recovery so as i said you can see on this one that it's reversible so it goes around like so and then on this one you can see that we've actually just it's a bit tricky to see because it's black wire but we've just left it plain so again this is where you can play about with it oh closing jump rings <gasps> Don't, don't scare me, Star. Gosh, I close a lot of jump rings like that. That's got to have been painful, but I hope you're okay. All right, so I'm just putting this so I can make sure you can see exactly as I want you to see. Right, so we're going to have a go at making one of these up now. So I have to undo one to redo it. So which one shall we undo to redo? Um, we've got the lovely um, rainbow one seems to be very popular should we do that with the gold i think we will so i'm going to move all of these out of the way okay and i've actually used so for this tool wise you don't need a lot of tools you just need your flush cutters or your cutters um really some chain nose pliers or some bent chain nose pliers uh bail making pliers are quite cool or something like that if you've got it Love these daggers. Yeah, they're amazing, aren't they? 
they're kind of like arrowheads there. So they're actually hematite arrowheads. Um, and I just think they are absolutely gorgeous. They're just beautiful. So yeah, a great fun way of covering these. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to take this one off and then and you can see how secure it is. It's like it's not going anywhere. Um, so yeah, what I've got here, these are bell making pliers. Now, if you've got mandrels or anything like that, then they're great. Um, so in the PDF, I do make a comment about making sure that you if you're using the bale, um, I'm using the larger size. So this can actually be threaded onto the chain and sat where you want it to be. Now, if you've made a smaller chain, then you will need to just remember to add your pendant in during the um, when you're actually making the chain up. This is on the basis of the bail being large enough to go over the beads. OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, which one have I taken? The rainbows. I believe that's you. Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut the wire off because I need to, I've used all of my pieces up to show you a sample. So I'm going to do this. Okay. So I like, do you know what? I sat down and this, this, these projects aren't actually that long either. You know, it's lovely to sit down, put a film or something on. Once you've made the pendant, it's just making the rosary link chain. So, you know, it's a really nice, relaxing project as well. So I've got my piece here. And what I want to do is I actually want to create a, uh, I'm going to cut a long piece of wire. So I, again, it's a bit of trial and error with this, but I'm going to cut about... I think I said it was about 40, about 40, about just under half of a meter. This is how I measure. You can see me in the corner, but I kind of measure with my um, two in an arm's length. It's about half of a meter, maybe just just slightly over about 40. I think I, I, think I put about um, 40 centimeters. So bring the wire around, fold it in half. And then you want to kind of just roughly find the center and place your bead onto it. Now, if you've got a multicolored one and you want there to be a specific side to be the front, then make sure you kind of choose that and then put the front facing upwards. Sorting my beady stash out a few days ago, I came across my arrowheads and this tutorial is perfect timing. Oh, that's amazing, Joanne. Well, make sure you let me see how you get on. So I'm just taking a sneaky cup of coffee. Oh, much needed on this rainy day. I hide it behind my curtain. And my curtain's hiding all my rubbish. <laughs> That's what we have when we do makeshift um, makeshifts uh, studios. So I've got this in place here, and I'm just going to bring it across. So I've placed it roughly in the center, and then coming across, and then coming across. Okay. And then I'm going to just come around again and again. So now the wires are technically across the back. And then across again and across again. So, you know, remember, have a bit of fun with this. It doesn't have to be like exact. Now what I want to do now my two wires are at the front is I want to just bring them up. So I'm going to just bring them up at an angle and up at an angle. Now you're going to have your wire is going to because this wire has come across from the bottom and this wire has come across from the top, the top. Sorry. So you are just going to have to gently pull that up, but that's fine. OK. And then I'm going to just place that here. So you've got that nice cross shape just there. Good morning, Trish. Just brought the silver and the bronze. Oh, amazing star. Well, like I said, I'd love to see what you come, what you create with them. I'm always available if you need any extra help. I am on Facebook, obviously. I'm Laura Binding. I'm also on Unique You by Laura Binding. So always happy if you get stuck or anything to give you, you know, give me a shout and I'll see what I can do. So I've got this in place like this. And now what I want to do is I'm holding this nice and steady. 
So I'm just switching to my other hand. I'm right hand dominant, so I'm switching to holding it to my left hand. I'm just holding the two wires at the top where they kind of cross. And then I want to just come in with my right hand and I'm just going to twist them very, very gently. So literally two twists. So you can see that there, hopefully. So you've got, uh, I made with them last year. They're great and they have a lovely feel to them. They do. Hey, Natalie, how are you? Uh, yeah, they do. And I'm not going to lie. I spotted these and I was like, yeah, I need to do something with those. They're super cool. Um, I just, uh, the thing is, but I'm that person that, you know, if you go to um, a, a museum or a castle um, and they've got like the little shop and they also have like the little arrowheads or the little uh, fossils, I am always in there, I'm always buying them, and I love anything like that. So to have them in this like ready-made form, but they still have that sort of authentic look to them, I just absolutely love it. I think they're fantastic. Okay, so I've got that in place here. And now what I'm going to do, oh, bear with me on my mind. <laughs> what you can see in the corner of my room here is so because we're in a cottage we've got a sofa and two chairs and five dogs so you can imagine the arguments so savannah my little french bulldog who's normally sleeping behind me in my video is currently sitting on the sofa and she's sitting on gypsy and gypsy's not appreciated um so there may be a bit of a bark in a moment where she tells her to get off um so i've got this in place and this is just locked in ready and if you see it's just coming slightly above the um <laughs> oh oh she's yeah it's debatable whether it's our star <laughs> she's just literally like what oh. um bless her so yeah you've got the um twist is coming just up past the top of the um sort of pendant so i'm coming in as i said with my bell making pliers it doesn't have to be bell making pliers but just something that you can get a good sort of nice clean wrap around now i'm going for the larger size and i believe this is an eight mil Stop it. And then I put in my pliers in here. Sorry. Savannah, stop. She'll stop in a moment. So I'm just going to come in with my pliers here. And I'm coming above, probably about a centimeter above, and bringing this all the way around. And then I'm just sort of wiggling it a little bit so I can get that to meet. And when I remove that, I should put both those wires. Sorry. Savannah, please stop. Bear with me one moment. I know what it is. Stop it. There's no one under it. Okay. Right. Sorry about that. That barking was because there was a pile of blankets on the sofa and Savannah was convinced Gypsy was under it and she wasn't. Uh remember you doing them just struggled to find a tutorial i'm not very computer savvy oh the, the, the tutorial will probably be in uh the facebook page i just showed you joanne just probably have to go down a little bit so i've got my pliers in now so you can see it by bringing both those wires around at the same time oh angela oh morning julie well do you know what though angela all that was was because there was a pile of blankets on the sofa and she wanted to make sure there wasn't a dog underneath it. So she was barking at the blankets. See, she's gone quiet now, taking the blankets off the sofa. Revealed that there was no one underneath. <laughs> right. So I've just bringing this around. So you can see it looking like this. Oopsie. And I'm going to bring my pliers back. And then I'm just going to do a wrap loop. So just keeping it nice and steady. And I tend to take my pliers out now because I find it easier <laughs> dogs are hilarious they are um and i'm just going to hold this together bring both these wires around so they sit next to each other like so and then just wrapping them once or twice so they meet the top of that pendant now, I can't keep it like this because there's no stability to the back. So as pretty as that looks, that's not got any stability. So we need to give it a little bit of stability. So to do that, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to just bring this around and then I'm going to separate my wires. I'm, I'm actually, actually, these are in the right direction. Sometimes they come around. And this is a prime example because in the demonstration that I did for the photos, my wires placed differently. Um, and so I had one going in one direction, one in the other. So I had to kind of spiral it a bit differently. But both my wires are in the right direction for this. So, you know, these things will happen. Let that just focus. Because what I want to do now is kind of like an inverted spiral. Just focus in for me. And then what I'm going to do is just keep my thumb nice and close. Bring the wire around into a curve. Just checking the focusing. There you go, Ink. And a curve. There you go. And around again, and around again. Now, if you didn't want these this spiral section here, you can, of course, just wrap it a couple of times and then skip to the next stage. But I just think this is a pretty way of, of uh, covering that sort of bail uh, section. Just bring that around to be whatever size you want it to be. And then when you're happy, you want one wire at the top and one wire at the bottom, like so. Now, if you were wanting to do um, it to be double sided, I'm actually going to take the wire around to the other side and show you how um, if the wires are in, a, in the opposite direction, one at the top, one at the bottom, how you could kind of um, fix that. So you would just bring one wire up and it's then basically met the top wire and then you just bring it around. And then you would just repeat the same. So you just want it to spiral. I'm having to move it down a bit because it's going to hit the camera. So if you wanted it to be reversible, we wanted it to have a spiral on both sides. This is how you would kind of approach it. So Joanne's just saying, uh, sorry, Natalie's just saying flint arrowheads into the T totally be search. Yeah, there you go. So that's how you can find Natalie's. And it's great because, and I often say this, Natalie, about a lot of the things, obviously, you and I both do a lot of very similar sort of, um, obviously, wire work. We, you know, jewelry creating. Um, and I absolutely love that you could give two designers the same materials and they could come up with something completely different. And I just think that that's absolutely great. I mean, come up with the same idea as well, because that's the way our minds work, isn't it? Um, but I just love the fact that, you know, give. Uh, I, I, maybe we should do that one day, Natalie. Maybe we should speak to Kitty and see if she can give us like the same kit and we can have a little challenge off. And not a challenge against each other, but like have the same kit and both come, see what we both come up with. I think that would be great fun. I think that spiral is really pretty and great to make them double sided as the arrowheads are beautiful on both sides and often have different colorings. 100% Natalie, I completely agree with you. So, and, and that's why, like I said, I think on the mermaid one where it did actually have like the greeny gold color on one side and then the pink color on the other, I did exactly that. I made it multi functional. <laughs> OK, so you would again just do that to the size that you want it to be done. Now, you want wires to come down across the back because we still need to secure this. If you see, this wire here is in a perfect position. So I can bring that one to come down and again and hook it to come around towards the front. This one here, I want it to get across the front like this. So I could either just bend it, but that's not going to work. So what I can do is I'm going to just bring it back to the front. Now, this bit isn't in the um, P 
picture guide, by the way, because this is just a little bit more uh, and a little bit more to the design rather than I kept it quite simple for the PDF. Um, but I will um, explain again. But if you want it to be double sided, you just go straight. So can you see how I'm feeding it underneath? And that's the great thing about using a 0.8 wire is now that's going to hopefully what that's done is it's come underneath here and just use your hand to just kind of get it to go into that direction. So you have a little word of it, encourage it and then just bend it to go in that direction. So you have again another kind of triangle shape in that direction. Hi, Sheila. That's OK. No problem. So the wires are back at the front and they're in a perfect position to almost deliberately crisscross them. So I'm deliberately, I'm on camera, focus for me. Just checking that you can see it on, got it on my phone as well. Just so I can see that you're seeing it okay. Yeah. And just seeing what a challenge off that sounds fun. I think it would be fun. Well, like a challenge off, but like, uh, you know, same kit, two designers, see what kind of you come up with. I love anything like that. Um, because I think everybody has a different take on something, which is really great. So we've got this here, and then I'm going to just bring this across now. Again, because we have got the double sided element, normally. We would just bring that across around the back and cut it. Morning, all dreary here in Fife, Glenroths, and blowing a gale, playing havoc with the internet. Gonna have to watch this back as I just can't get a stable signal. Ah, oh. well, I hopefully go check out Phoenix Creations. Go check out the website because the kits have currently got ten percent off of them. So the kits are, if I just double check, seven pound twenty. So instead of eight pound. So go and check that out because it's only um, on for the rest of the week. Um, but we've got lots of different colorways and these are absolutely beautiful projects. So, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring these wires around here. Just wrapping around. Mm. I don't want to wrap and bolt it all up. That's what I'm trying to avoid. So I'm going to as we did before bring this just inside that little gap in front of the spiral and same on this side make sure you don't pull it out of shape same on this side now obviously if you were wanting it to be double like you wanted that to have another strip down it you could just go back down again but i think i'm going to leave it like this i think it still looks pretty and then i can come in at this point and just kind of cut the ends so that they're what, half of a centimeter if you can see it's just cut there um and then i can just come in and tuck that into your wire works tuck it right into that bale make sure it's not going to um get so it's just tucked just underneath there. Just find a place for it to sort of disappear nicely. And then I will, I've said this before, but I always recommend handling your piece so you can see, you know, handle it. You'll feel if there's any sharp edges. And then, of course, you can just open out my favorite part, opening out that top section. And that will make that um, look more like a pendant. Any wires that need to be just settled, just settle them. And there you have your kind of double sided piece. So what I'm also going to very quickly do, and then I will show you the, um, I will then show you the um, rosary linking. I'm just going to quickly show you that again, but the same way as we've got it on the PDF. So I won't go as in depth to it, but I will just very quickly, I will slow it down when we get to the bail part. So again, I'm just taking that off. I'm just going to come in, and this is how quick and easy these can become. So I'm just going to around up 
up. Give it a twist. Love that purpley colour. It's beautiful, isn't it? Honestly, I just love all of these. And there's seven different colourways available. So lots of different options. I love the beads that we've got with them that have accompanied them. So I'm just going to quickly show you the bail on, on a single view, which is what we've got on the uh, on the PDF. So we're just going to bring us around into a pretty spiral, coming all the way around. So this has all been done in slower detail for you previously. So the difference now, it does, doesn't it? So the difference now is we want these wires to come down across the back. We want them to just come across to support into a triangle. And then come back across here, across here, come for an angle, come for an angle. And then you'll see we've got that, you've got that across the back, it's stable. And then what you want to do is just blend the wires in. So you can see we've crossed them there, but I would want them just to have a little bit more security than that. So I would probably just bring it up to the top here, maybe. Or, yeah, I bring one up to the top and just cut that one there. So you've got them both across the back. And then cut them nice and flush. I'm cutting that one a little bit longer there because it didn't have as far to wrap around. But what I can do is push that right into the wire work that into the wire work give these little pull down make sure they're nice and locked in that's not going anywhere and that's your completed piece i've got a signal sat on the edge of a bath sat on edge of bath with meg staring at me <laughs> seven how do we choose Ah, oh, see that's it isn't it um Spirals, I've not mastered them. I keep having to cut the wire off and start again. It's coating on the wire comes off. Trying again today, a wire heart over oval bead with spiral top. Well, I'll give you my top tip when it comes to doing anything with wire and spirals is, did you see that I actually didn't use my tools for any of that? I used my hands for most of it. So my top tip is, you know, just go gentle. Use your hands as much as you can. Maybe we can fit, fit in a wire. Um, a nice basic spiral design in the next couple of weeks or so i've got some projects i've got to line up with um with kitty so it's something i can look at but it's about handling them it's about the way that you you know you'll notice that with this i barely use my pliers for any of this design um the wire is lovely and soft so it's very easy for you to be able to manipulate so that is your finished bead and you saw how quick that was for me to do so now what I want to do is just very quickly show go over how we can do a matching um, rosary link chain. So I'm going to just take two beads. I'm going to show you a bead. Let's go with four. I'm actually going to show you how to do two beads, connect them, and how we can do the clasp and hook as well. So my way of when I work with rosary linking is I tend to just draw a long piece of wire, um, sort of however you feel comfortable handling, probably normally about a metre or so. That's just my preference um, because I just find that an easier way and with less wastage. So I'm just straightening this wire out a little bit because it's from the end of the reel, so that's not wasted. So what I'm going to do is with my wire here, I'm going to come down about an inch and a half or so, and I'm going to take my round nose pliers. Oh, you do need your round nose pliers as well. I think I forgot to mention them at the beginning. So I tend to come in about halfway across my round nose pliers. Um, and what that's going to do is I'm going to be able to, I come down about halfway around my round nose pliers. That gives me a nice consistent loop. You can, there are other ways of doing rosary linking. 
You can use sort of bail making pliers again in smaller size. There are um, wrap, there are loop pliers, everything. A lot of the time, I mean, I've got like a natural, I go to the same place a lot because I do this a lot. But you can also just use a marker sharpie pen, something like that, alcohol pen, ink based pen, so it won't rub off. And just put a little mark and you'll always know where to go. So I tend to go about halfway, bring that around and roll it. Okay. And then I put my thumb in really close and I just kick my pliers back. So that gives me my loop. Okay. Paint on my hands, sorry. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop my pliers back in and then just pushing this across. Now the key to a good wrapped loop is a lot of the time people have the instinct to pull the wire down and then around if you look at your plot holding your pliers now i've got mine facing up towards me i've got this nice and straight and what i'm going to do is literally almost hit the pliers you want to be almost coming up only for that first wrap and then around once you notice I'm using my pliers almost, uh, my hand almost like a vice. So once and then twice. There we go. And then I'm going to just snip. So maybe not quite an inch and a half, maybe an inch. Just drop my pliers. Take a second. Need those pliers. They are my flush cutters. So I need those. Ugh, got them. So then you have a nice wrap loop. Now you can see there that that is a little bit, it's not flush as it should be, and I can feel that as well. So I'm going to just come in with my pliers, just give that a little bit of a squidge. Okay, and then that's, that's all that needed to make that nice and flush. Okay, then we need to add on our bead. Pop it all the way up. So it's now at that wrap. Come in with my bead uh, around those pliers again. And I'm not going to go in that same place. I'm not going to go to the middle. I'm going to go just towards the end, probably about half a centimetre in from the end. And then I'm going to push that wire at an angle. And what that does is that gives me the gap for that wrap. So that when I do my wrap in the same as I did just then, it can go down into that gap. Now I come back in at that same placement on my pliers about halfway. And then I come all the way around. And then, and the reason I leave a longer bit of wire is because it's easier to sort of handle I find because I'm going to go around once and then twice and there we have our wrapped loop gosh Laura I have a day of dropsies question can you use eye pins for this piece you absolutely can just the only thing is if you're making it as a continuous chain it's nice to have a continuous lock so yes, you could use eye pins, but you'd need to make sure they were nice and strong and that they weren't, you know, that you, what you don't want, ugh, there we are, is, so if I pull this in any way, that cannot come undone. And so you just want to make sure that your um, your wire is, is an eye pin is going to be able to hold it. Um, it looks easier than using eye pins. It is. Okay, again, I'm going to give you a top tip. Jan, practice with some 0.6 wire this is 0.8 and i will say it is a lovely soft look at how soft and malleable that is and it's got that strength so you can use the 0.8 wire practice with it but if you've got any um 0.6 at home maybe try using a 0.6 just to get used to wrapping the wires but honestly the the, the 0.8 is going to be okay because it's not going to sort of bend out of your way loads like a 0.6 might. So I'll go over that again, but I'm going to show you how to connect it. So again, I'm going to come down. What I do is roll it around. 
pop your thumb in and just a little kick. Now, what you want to do is add your bead. So I've just added that on here. And then you want to come in, back in with your pliers. Remember the top tip, as I said, Jan. Give it a try. Let me know how you get on. Honestly, don't forget you've got a tutorial as well if you purchase the kit. Nice and straight. And even with adding a bead on, now I'm going to give you another tip in a moment. So even with adding that bead on, can you see how I'm just kind of putting my pliers up and moving it out of the way? And I can just, what I did was I put my bead on. That was going to be wrapped too soon. And then wrap that around once and then twice. Make sure you don't leave yourself with too short a piece of wire there. Otherwise, you'll struggle to get it wrapped around. Um, so maybe just stick to sort of, like I said, maybe a little bit, even if you have to have a little bit of scrap, at least you'll be able to get I'm going to be uncomfortable to sort of do it and then i'm going to pop on the bead and now i'm going to show you how because we've all done this when you forget to pop your bead onto the chain what do we do we well, just saw me add the bead onto here so what i would do normally i know i've gone out of shot it's just because it's better it's better angle for me like this so i've got it back into this position here now I could just finish it off as I did a moment ago, as I just showed you, just wrapping that wire straight around. But if you forget to add it to the chain, which is very easy to do, you can add a bead in by just attaching a bead to either side. So that one loose one that I did is now attached here, and this one is now attached to the chain I've already made. So I am now going to just bring this around, put my pliers in. And like I said, by having a longer length, can you see how much more control I've got over wrapping that around? Yeah, you're going to get, yeah, you did. I get everything that you're saying with the eye pins. Um, my biggest concern with eye pins is their stability of being able, because they are an open, effectively, they're an open component. So what my concern is, like I said, if you pull it really it will get pulled or caught or anything then there's no it, it can pull out a shape um just practice with this have a little practice maybe um but try it with a point eight or a point six um you know see how you get on this is a really lovely technique i tell you what i'm going to just show you one more little thing in a moment that i think will sell you on it it's not part of the demo but hey we love to go a little bit rogue sometimes right and maybe again it's something i'll pop into a potential uh future design um we'll do a whole little piece on it but let me show you so i've just wrapped it so how easy that is once you get into the rhythm of it, it becomes so easy so let me show you one of my favorite things to do i know i've gone out of view all i'm doing is a wrap loop it's just a bit easier for me to do it without the camera right above me okay so we're here okay wrap around once and then when you're using a long piece of wire you can't do this when you're doing eye pins so you can keep it simple like that keep it simple like that okay and then if you want to jazz it up even more you can come back around the other side and do what I call a little kiss Give her a moment to catch up. It's because I've got stuff in view. There we go. And then all you do, wrap it back around that sort of section there and snip. And then, of course, give it a little flatten to make sure there's no sharp edges. And there's your little decorative wrapped loop, which you wouldn't be able to do if you were using eye pins. Just saying. <laughs> so there's that as well. Uh, the other thing that you can do is make individual wrapped loops if you don't feel happy connecting them to a continuous chain. And then what you can do is make wrapped loops and then you can just connect them with jump rings.
and that's a really lovely way as well and that will if you, you know you want to just get comfortable making a wrap loop like a component like a component like a unit then just make a load of these and then just connect them with jump rings and i actually think that looks beautiful as well it's one of my favorite things to do it takes the stress of remembering to connect them away uh, and it takes away the stress of um the other beads being in the way so you know quite a few little options for you there and then just very quickly i want to just show you how i would create the actual clasp so the clasp itself we're going to make the chain for um as you know it's desired length however long you want it to be then you're going to actually connect it to the chain bring it around can you see how i'm always kind of pushing that wire around with my hand hopefully you can see that okay we got that okay so pop your bead on so to do the clasp why not have a go 100 percent not just to get my coffee okay so what we want to do now is to do a clasp so to do the clasp you want to go probably about inch and a half two inches along your wire so when it comes to making the clasp make sure you've got a nice workable length of wire so you want to go about inch and a half to two inches and you still want to have excess wire to be able to come down and wrap around you want to take your round note, uh, your chain nose pliers or bent chain nose pliers in my case and you just want to fold that down and i'm pinching that so it's nice and close and going all the way down give that a little pinch and then run that all the way down to the bottom that might be a smidge long but it's fine so you think it always makes me think of a duck build pla duck build platypus like so okay now i find yeah i might try this i needed a new challenge to get me going oh mina let us know how you get on i want to see what you get up to now i'm invested in this i want to be tagged okay Sh share it with me um so i'm kind of along here like this and what i've got is my sort of folded over piece of wire now i will often use my pliers to help keep it all steady for me so pliers keeping that nice and straight and then just taking that wire and wrapping around that base there a couple of times like we already have like so okay and then snip that wire away And then we can just round those pliers. You can either, it depends how long your actual little loop is. My other one I made a bit on the main necklace, I made this one a bit short. So I just folded this one over into a little bend, like a little hook. On this one, you can actually do a little roll, a little section at the end. And come back in with your pliers and roll that down like. Sorry, my laptop keeps screen saver on my laptop and it keeps shutting my laptop on. Um, not my laptop, but just like my screen. And bend that over, and there is your hook. There. And I'm very quickly going to just show you how we can do the other side, which is the clasp section. And the only difference with this is we're going to um we are going just give it a um like a double loop so just running a smidge out of wire we'll use this one okay so again you want to make sure you've got enough um enough wire to be able to create that loop so again we're going to roll that little section here connect it onto your chain bring it around 
And like I said, see how I'm holding it here? And I actually almost just kind of, once I've got that first, just push it almost with your finger and thumb. Snip. Add on your bead. I made wire has changed colour because I've had to switch to a different one. <laughs> um, coming back to my bow making pliers, I'm going to come in with the smaller ones. Now I'm going to come in. So I've, I've pushed that with my thumb to get it at an angle and sort of rolled that wire around. And then I'm going to just roll it once. And then I'm, see, that's one loop. Now, because I'm only using a 0.8 wire, I want it to be a little bit stronger than this. Plus, visually, this is a double loop. So this has been double wrapped here. So visually, I want the loop to match. So I'm going to go ahead, put my pliers back in and just push that wire around my pliers a second time to give me that double loop effect. Coming across like so. And then just wrapping that. Sorry, I don't know that one. All the way around here like so. And that's going to give me my clasp. Snip it. My pliers. And there's your clasp. I've actually made a bracelet. <laughs> So you can see there, I've already got exactly the same. How pretty is that as a bracelet? If I just had matching coloured wire there, that's annoying, but there you go. Um, made a few hearts on Monday and more rainbow today. Got lots of wire in my stash. Made lots of eye pins, but just simple necklaces. Yeah, again, this is, I mean, eye pins are, are brilliant for something like this. 100% go ahead and use eye pins as well. But this is just a really great sort of alternative way. So there's your finished piece already for you. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much everything for today, really. Um, it will fit a lovely <laughs> Natalie pattern, yeah. <laughs> um, it's a really lovely design. Um, like I said, I've got that as a bracelet, but that's just because of demoing. But, you know, you can see there that my top goes on, my pendant goes onto it. You could even design your pendant to kind of sit around one of the beads like that if you wanted it to. So it sits like that. You know, there's so much you can do with this. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm going to be back in a couple of weeks' time. I've got a lovely project. It's a wrapped agate pendant. Um, I'll just very quickly show you it here. Hang on. So we've got this reversible wrapped pendant. And this is coming up in a couple of weeks' time. Not next week, but a week after, I think. Um, so that's that project. Um, was it just me but the video kept stopping um, I'm sorry I didn't know um, I'm going to be coming off now anyway but thank you for your time hopefully you've been able to colour it um, hopefully you've been able to follow it and I look forward to seeing what you will come up with like I said tag me if you make anything and I will see you in a couple of weeks time and enjoy the rest of your lovely cold windy rainy day um, okay thank you everybody it's been great and I'll see you soon bye